Hi, my name is Morgan and I'm making a video about mental health and diet. What qualifications do I have to speak about mental health and diet? None! Zero. I have no credentials to speak with any authority on mental health and diet. Any idiot can make a video and put it on YouTube, clearly. So why am I making this video then? Because I am driving my friends crazy. I recently stumbled across um, this whole idea of nutritional ketosis and it's pretty much all I've been talking about lately and they want to shoot me in the face. In the beginning they were a little bit curious but you know at the end of the day they really don't care that much about what the macronutrient breakdown is of my diet. They might kind of look at me a little funny when I pull my Himalayan pink sea salt out of my bag and say what are you doing? We're carrying that around with you. And I say, yes, as a matter of fact, remember when I mentioned that macronutrient ratio that I'm doing? Well, what happens when you eat that way is your insulin levels drop. And your insulin is what tells your brain to send signals to your kidneys to hold on to sodium. But when your insulin goes down, your brain says, sodium, we don't need so stinking sodium. And with all the water that I've been drinking, all of my electrolytes are flushing out of my system. Do you have any idea how important magnesium and potassium are to your body? Oh my god, are you still talking? Sugar's bad. We get it. I actually had one friend say, Morgan, you're becoming the most boring person alive. So I, you know, might need to talk a little bit less about it with them, which is totally understandable. I'm talking to my cell phone in my bedroom instead. Hmm. I'm also recording this for posterity and to be able to track my progress. Um, I mentioned that this is about diet, but it's also about mental health. But first, what is nutritional ketosis? I am so glad you asked. Keto, as the cool kids are calling it these days, it's a low carb. When I say low carb, I'm saying between 20 to 50 grams, and I kind of keep mine around 30. High fat, and when I say high fat, I mean a very high fat, moderate protein intake eating style that creates this metabolic state that puts you into nutritional ketosis. So the carbs are about 5% of your diet. Protein, I keep mine around 70 grams. It's it's not a lot. People think low carb, they think high protein. Um, that's only about 10 to 15% of my diet. So if 15 to 20% of your diet is only coming from fat and protein, or excuse me, carbs and protein, where are you getting the other 80 to 85%? From fat! So what happens when you do that, your body starts to use fat as energy. And this creates things called ketone bodies and your ketone those ketone bodies become your body's fuel source to sum it up you convert from being a sugar burner to a fat burner and it does amazing things for people when i first came across it by accident a friend of mine who's like a total nutrition geek had brought it up and i had no idea what he was talking about um even though it's kind of i'm realizing it's everywhere and so I really am under a rock. Most of what I was initially finding was on weight loss because when people think low carb, they think weight loss. So there were a lot of resources and blogs and videos out there that were like, hey, lose 20 pounds in 30 days or um, bodybuilders that were like, get ripped. Brr. Losing weight is really not a goal or a priority for me at this moment. Um, as far as being ripped, uh, I have two kids and I have accepted a lot of the changes that have happened with my body after becoming a mom. Um, I actually like my body a whole lot. In my 35 years on this earth, I've never had like super defined abs or been ripped. It might be really awesome, but I don't really know what I'm missing out on, so it's just not a goal of mine at the moment. So if I'm not trying to lose weight and I'm not trying to, you know, get a six pack, what the heck? Why would I be interested in this and why would I be driving my friends crazy talking about it? Turns out initially 
Nutritional ketosis, not to be confused with diabetic ketoacidosis. Nutritional ketosis was used in the 20s to treat children with epilepsy, and it was actually really effective. And I read that and I went, oh, no, no, what? If you know me and are watching this, which you're not because you don't want to hear me talk about it anymore, but they would be saying, Morgan, you don't have epilepsy and your children don't have epilepsy. And I would say, yeah, you're right, we don't. However, as you know, I do take a medication called Lamotrigen. Lamotrigen and lithium and Depico, those are all commonly used medications to treat bipolar disorder or mood stabilizers. They are also anti-seizure medication to treat epilepsy. Do you see where I'm going with this? So I immediately got off of the, you know, lose 20 pounds in 30 days websites and was looking for research and case studies where maybe bipolar disorder was being treated with a ketogenic diet. What did I find? Can a ketogenic diet treat bipolar disorder? Yes, in theory. There's not been any large case studies or research done and it's really, it's really unfortunate. I think with a lot of things with keto and it being misunderstood by a lot of doctors, even though there are doctors who are doing incredible things and in treating all kinds of illnesses, a lot of people end up just doing kind of an M plus or N equals one experiment on themselves. And I am currently going to join their ranks. With that being said, I am not looking to go off of bipolar medication. And this might be wildly unpopular with a lot of people, but I'm going to say it anyway. Bipolar disorder is a very serious illness and treating it can be complicated, especially in the beginning when you're trying to figure out what works for you. I'm very fortunate that I'm able to take something that doesn't cause me any serious side effects and I understand from talking to folks that things like weight gain and headaches and dizziness and all that stuff, it must really suck. But it is possible to find things that work for you that aren't going to make, make you just feel miserable. And I think that medication management is pretty fundamental and foundational to managing bipolar disorder. That's just my opinion. This part of my treatment and management, it works for me. If it doesn't work for you or you are just like totally anti big pharma, I, to I get that perspective as well. It's just not where I'm at. However, we do not get to float through life anyone gets to float through life taking a little magical pill and think it's going to solve all of our problems. I think that medication management is kind of foundational. It's the bottom of that pyramid. It's not the whole thing. Other things that have a big impact on your mood and your health, and this is not rocket science and it applies to everyone. What we eat, exercise, getting fresh air and out into nature, getting adequate amounts of sunlight, sleep. Sleep is huge. It's really important for everyone. We live in a sleep deprived nation. If you have bipolar disorder, sleep is your friend. It is also your canary in the coal mine. And if you are getting too much or not enough, you can court track how your mood is doing for the love of God sleep. The other aspect I think to mental health, I think physical health and um, applies to everyone across the board, not just people that are managing a mental illness, is having a rock solid support system. And I'm really fortunate in that I have that and I want to keep them, which would be why I am talking to my cell phone right now in my bedroom and to whoever you are instead of them because they need a break from my current ketogenic diet obsession. They're happy for me. They just don't want to hear about it anymore. So I think that the whole 
tracking mood in terms of my diagnosis goes is more of a long-term game in order to really see if it's helping that's you know months out in the meantime I do believe I'm gonna be seeing changes in my physical body and how I feel and in my energy levels which all impact our mental health so thank you for letting me get that off my chest because I love my friends and I want to keep them um, and on that community aspect and I cannot state this enough it is crucial like it is so important important I think it's probably one of the most important aspects of our physical health not just our mental health and if you're struggling right now and you're kind of in the beginning of this journey whether it's with keto or bipolar disorder or any sort of depression or loss or shame or addiction or whatever it is community is crucial you need it if you don't have that or you're not really around people you think are going to understand um, in terms of mental health, I linked down somewhere in the notes in the YouTube lands um, of some links to different nonprofits and groups that you may be able to reach out to for resources. You also might be able to see what they have going on in your community and you might find some of your tribe because, you know, while I have a very diverse, eclectic, wonderful group of people around me, talking to people who share your experiences and can relate to what you're going through is like it's the best it helps a lot so that's it this person who has no qualifications or credentials will be checking in periodically to talk about all the things and all the feels i'll let you know how all that's going because you're kind of curious about that too maybe you're doing this and i want to know i want to know what you know or something all right till next time